Hey there, I'm John. Welcome to Hand Tool Homeschool, where we are bringing homeschool dads and kids together one woodworking project at a time. And today's project, I want to do a little bit of an experiment. It's something I've never done before. I want to do a bevel on the edge of this board around three sides. And what the goal is, is to make this a lid to a box. And I want to have a nice bevel on it. Just try to set it off from something that isn't uh, quite so plain. Just a little tiny detail to make it look good. So, this is new for me. I've never done a bevel before. I imagine it's not too hard, but we're not going with some exact jig here to make it perfect. Uh, however, we're gonna try to make it look really nice just with a hand plane. I'm gonna use my number four smoother. So, let's uh, just follow along today. This is an experiment. Hopefully I don't fail and it turns out good. So anyway, Let's get to it. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna start off with a scrap piece of wood here in my vise and just get an idea of how I wanna set my plane. And in this case, since I'm gonna be doing a bevel, I want to set it very shallow. So I'm gonna go ahead, I, first I start off, just so you know, I start off taking no shavings. So there's nothing coming out right now. And I'm just gonna adjust it ever so slightly to where I'm getting a really shallow cuts. And now I'm starting to take shavings across. And I'm going for the full width of the board. Now in this case, this board's pretty chewed up on the side, but I just want an overall idea of how my plane is set. I don't want it to be too aggressive when I go to create this bevel. But we're set now, I'm ready to go. So now I'm gonna take this poplar board I have here. I've cut this to six inches in length. I've made sure that it's squared off really nice. That's going to be important when we do the bevel because we're going to do it on three sides and we want to create an effect of kind of like a mitered corner. And sort of what we did in the round over video, if you did, if you watch that, this would be very similar, except we're just going to do a bevel. Some people, if you do a lighter bevel, you could call it a chamfer and or chamfer. I'm not exactly sure how you say that. But um, I'm going to go slightly more with a little heavier bevel. Anyhow, if it's square on the corners, it should make these corners nice when you do the bevel. And let me see if I can um, go ahead and explain that a little better by just doing it. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put it in my vise. Oh, yeah. I do want to mention this. I actually want to do the bevel. So, if, so right here, this is the back. I want to do the bevel on this edge across the grain. That's the end grain there. And I want to go ahead and do it this way because when I come with the plane across this edge, it's going to crack this front corner off because these fibers, the grain is running this way across. It's, so when I'm going against the grain, it's going to crack that edge off because it's unsupported fibers. So if you do the bevel here first, then when you come across the long edge, it's gonna take those cracks away and you won't see them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. Now, what I'm gonna to try to do here, oh yeah, I almost forgot. You know, I think it would be a good idea to actually go ahead and decide ahead of time how wide I want my bevel to be. And on this piece, I'm going to say I want it somewhere around, I think about an eighth. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off an eighth of an inch here. I'm going to mark it off down here. I'm also going to mark it off on each end as well. And you'll see here in a minute why I'm doing this. This is all just kind of like a what I would consider a common sense theory approach. I hope it works. <laughs> So anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect either. I mean, eventually we want to get to the point where we have perfection, we, but it doesn't always have to be perfect. Sometimes handmade things look special if they're, you know, a little uneven here and there. So anyhow, what I'm going to do now is just check my measurement because one of them looks slightly off. Let me see. Go ahead and just double check your measurements. Oh, 
Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and just mark them all the way across the edge on all three sides. Try to get it as straight and accurate as you can. Just line them up. I'm going to mark all the way across and do the same on each end. And I'm going to hope that this comes out even in the end. Let's see, probably blocking the camera that way. You probably can't see my marks too well, but I'm just marking off that eighth all the way around. Okay, now that I have that marked, what I'm going to attempt to do is put is get my bevel. I'm going to let me change the camera angle here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here is go across the board at a 45 angle with the plane like this, and then skew it this way at a 45. So sometimes I get off a little bit, but just remember, try to go slow when you're doing this. And you know what? I almost messed up there. I didn't put it on the end grain piece, which is what I want to start with. Remember, we want to go, this is the back of the box lid. So I want to go toward the front where the other bevel is going to be. That way when it cracks off, later I can conceal it when I do this front bevel. So we're on the end grain side now, and I'm going to go ahead and try to just do even shavings across. And I'm going to go slow, and I'm also going to keep an eye of where I am. So if it looks like I'm getting off in one area or the other, I can just take an extra swipe off whatever, whatever area I need to. So it's a little shallow right now, and I could probably take a little heavier cut, but I like that I'm cutting slower. And also, by taking a shallower cut, it's less likely to be as aggressive and break off the fibers worse. And that's a good thing. And since it's not a very heavy bevel, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it where I have it, because I like the looks of it already. And we're almost there, really. I, I want to go ahead and just take that line off. I will mention real quick, when you mark poplar, or any wood for that matter probably, but my experience with poplar is when I put a, a line and it's dark, it's really hard to get that line out. It goes down into the fibers of the wood and it's hard to get it out. That's been my experience. So anyway, take that for what it's worth, but I'm going to go ahead and make that uh, line just disappear. And we're almost there. I'm just looking for evenness across, and it looks really, it looks really good, I think. Just a little more, and now I shouldn't have done that one because I skewed it a little more than I should have, but I fixed it. So, I'm going to go ahead and change sides, and I want to show you that real quick. See, it looks nice and even all the way across, nice and crisp. So if you just take your time, try to keep about a 45 degree angle, it's going to look great. Now, here's something that I faced when I was trying to figure this out um, in my mind earlier. It was, I can't, so, on the, so when I have it in the vise like this, and I'm going from back to front of the box, it's fine. I'm, I'm going the way I should from left to, or from right to left. However, if I flip it over, well, now I'm, if I try to plane, I'm going from the front to the back, and I could potentially crack this corner off, and I don't want to do a bevel back here. So I have nothing to conceal it if I, if I crack this off. So I don't want to plane from the front to the back. So how could I do this? And what I came up with was actually going to the bench and clamping it down. So let me adjust my camera angle and I'll show you how we can do that. Okay, so what I did was I went ahead and clamped 
the piece down to my workbench and I made sure to pull it away from the bench enough to where when I'm planing, my plane is not hitting my clamps. So just pay attention to that. But uh, get them cinched down really tight and I just loosened one. But yeah, try to get them cinched down tight so it doesn't move on you. If you notice when you're planning it's moving, you may have to stop and adjust. But let's go ahead and try this. And on this time around, I'm not gonna grab the handle like this because you won't be able to see very well. So hopefully it doesn't mess me up too much, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hold it here to the edge. It's a little awkward, but it should work. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And I'm, gonna, I'm at a little less than 45 across because my clamp, I could hit it, but it's okay. I could adjust, but I think I'm, for purposes of demonstration, I just want you to see this and uh, it's working pretty well, so no worries. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I do want to point out to you when I undo these clamps. Let me see if I can get a good shot here for you. You can see ever so slightly where the fibers are starting to break off, but not much. So a shallow cut for something like this is really important. So last one up is the long edge and I'm going to go to the vise again for that. Okay, so nice, long, even strokes. Just watch and make sure they're staying even. Another thing I wanna watch for, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out for a minute and show you. I was trying to explain it earlier. I may not have explained it so well, but what we're going for here, see if I can get it focused for you. There we go. You get this nice corner here with this sharp mitered looking edge and really you want it perfect from corner to the top of the corner to the corner edge here. You just want that nice perfect line and you can get off of your line if you take too much off. You just have to kind of keep watching where you're going but the idea is when I get down to this line here it's going to line up perfectly with the outer corner of the piece. So hopefully we end up there, but if not, you get the general idea. All right, let's see if I can pull it off. So I just started to get off the uh, line with the corner ever so slightly here. Not much, it's probably not even noticeable to most folks. But over here, I need to still move that line over a little more. So I'm gonna take a little more off here. I have to be careful because it's so close. I'm trying to get rid of the pencil line here, but I can get rid of that later. But uh, go just a little bit further here. It doesn't take much. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, looks pretty nice. I like it. Let me show you this corner. See if you can tell what I was talking about earlier. See how that corner right there is all in line. Go from the bottom all the way up to the top corner. Really nice. Over here, 
I'm ever so slightly off. You can see. So you just have to be careful when you're planing that you, um, you know, take your time, make sure it's even. But look, that's even really close. And when you're looking at the box like this, you really, you're really not going to notice. So that's just the perfectionist in me. But that is a quick way to do a really nice looking bevel. And it just sets off your box. It sets off the lid. It's not, it's not just a straight board and plane. It's just enough of a little touch to make it look really fantastic. Okay, so there we have it. It actually turned out pretty well. And what was fun about this video is that it was an experiment for me. It was the first time I'd ever done it. I decided just to try it on the video, just, uh, just kind of like uh, the first time run through, just so you would get an idea as a beginner, maybe how you could pull something off. Remember, I'm not that far ahead of you, just a couple years, and there's a whole lot of things I haven't tried. Well, and for one thing, um, I have a family, a very busy life, and there's just so many things I haven't tried. And something as simple as this, I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. But as you can see, this is a really quick way to make something look really, really cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you. And, you know, keep uh, watching. Pretty soon we're going to have a project coming up for a box a memory box and it's going to be really fun and it's going to be an exciting thing to build with your kids so that's what i got for today um, if you like the video please subscribe and also head on over to www.handtoolhomeschool.com check out things there i've got a lot of content that i'm building up and it's out there for you it's free and it's a whole lot of fun so again thanks a lot for being here today i appreciate you and always remember life's most important order love god love each other and woodwork. Until next time, see you then.